If you've been on crypto Twitter for any amount of time, then you've seen these annoying idiots with their .eth screen names. And to that I say, hey, I am one of those annoying idiots. Also, follow me on Twitter. I desperately need Birds are fake.eth at Trucks News Network. Now, if you want to be one of those annoying idiots too, then you've come to the right place because today we're talking about how to register an ENS domain. It's gaudy and preposterously expensive, like most things in crypto. I have three. First off, why would you even register a .eth name? And I'd say the first benefit is it gives you a sense of superiority and it makes people believe that you've been in crypto longer than you have. And actually, I've been in crypto for quite some time, but you would never know that because I literally just got my .eth name. I couldn't even get Bo.eth. I got Bo Troxclay.eth, which is my full name. And I got Birds are Fake .eth and Epstein didn't kill himself .eth, which by the way, I could sell you a subdomain of, but that's a topic for another time. Besides the vague sense of superiority, it allows people to send you Ether, ERC-20 tokens, ERC-721 tokens without having to type in your full public key. Instead, they can just type in your name .eth. Now, this is true just after registering the name, which is the second step of the three step process. But if you want to take the third step and actually make that resolve to it, it'll show up on places like Etherscan. Anywhere your public key would show up, your .eth name would show up instead. For instance, I have mine tied to a MetaMask account that is secured with hardware wallet. So that account, it can be my publicly facing sort of identity. It's where I can have a public portfolio that anybody can see. And also they could send me Ethereum ERC-20 tokens, Hex if they wanted to. Don't send me Hex, Hexicans. Oh, I hate Hex. Even though it would be super easy and you wouldn't have to put in my public address. But there's also vague plans in the future to allow websites to resolve to that. You can also, like I hinted at earlier, establish subdomains. For instance, I could establish, because I own birdsarefake.eth, I could also register bow.birdsarefake.eth and that would resolve to my address as well. Or I could sell that to anyone else. As long as you are the registrant of the underlying name, then you can register and give subdomains away to other people as long as you control the initial domain. So let's talk about how to do it and what it costs. First, you just go to app.ens.domains. Type in your name or whatever it is that you want. For instance, I really wanted this one, but unfortunately someone else has it and it expires in 2022. But hey, would you look at that? There's another one that I want. I'm going to go ahead and favorite this. So now it'll show up in my favorites when I go there. And I'm not going to show you what my favorites are because I don't want you to f steal the ones I haven't registered. But let's say I wanted to register this .eth domain. I would go and I would say, okay, how long do I want to register it for? It's $5 per year, but spoiler alert, you're going to pay way more in gas than you pay for the actual domain, unless you register it for like a hundred years. Which brings me to my like first hack for the ENS domain is it's really important to time when you're registering it. Now, gas fees are generally very high. This is not something you can do on a layer two, although they're talking about moving it to layer twos eventually, especially subdomain registration. They're thinking about moving to layer two, so the gas fees are a little bit lower, but this is a foundational service of Ethereum layer one. So these might just stay expensive forever. Point being, there are times when there are lower gas fees than others. Typically, Sunday nights, Monday morning. So like Monday, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. is typically when the lowest gas fees are. If you want to time it best, then you can, I'll link this, this, this series of analytics tools in the description. You can go here and see when, generally speaking, the lowest gas fees are gonna be, but again, <sighs> hate hate to break it to you, it's going to be expensive. So let's see, let's say I was registering this domain for four years. I would first submit a request to register. Now, this is going to be the least expensive step because this is basically just confirming that you're the one that's going to register it. The registration process is a little bit more gas intensive, which means that it's going to cost quite a bit more. And so you can see you have this estimation here of exactly how much it's going to cost. So when you do decide to do it, I would suggest going to etherscan.io slash gas track. And here you can see what the gas fees have been over the past couple of hours. There's also, uh, you know, if you've never explored this, is actually a whole bunch of information, like what gas fees look like and how much they've been historically, who's using the most gas, which is a pretty interesting thing to look at. It's always open sea, NFTs are dumb. No, NFTs aren't that dumb. I'm, I'm not Richard Hart. But you can see sort of what the going rate has been, how low it's been in the recent past. So you see four minutes ago, it was down around 62 guay, which, you know, a month ago, I would have said was still an insanely high price. But given the entire last week, it's been like over 100 on average. Maybe you take what you can get. I'm always shooting for transactions at around 30, although I haven't been able to get any through for less than about 40 guay, 45 guay for the last week. Maybe that's just because people are taking time off for Christmas. Christmas, New Year's, and so they're spending more time doing crypto but either way, this feels sort of like the new normal. You know, if your name is not something that's like highly sought after, and especially like at this point, it may be fine to just wait a couple of weeks or whatever before you do this, but I digress. Once you've found a good time to do it, then I'm gonna assume that you're doing this in MetaMask with a Trezor to secure your MetaMask because you shouldn't just be using a software wallet. You should have the hardware security behind it, especially if you're connecting something like an ENS domain. So click the link in the description. Oh, 
and set you up, Trezor. But let's assume you're using a MetaMask. You know, the, a lot of simple, like my Ether wallet also has these sort of advanced interfaces. You may need to turn them on in some instances, but if you're using MetaMask, you can just go to here to edit and you can look at the max fee. So for this one, okay, 83 GUE has been typically the max fee or has been the, the fee over the past couple of minutes. It's already up to like 96, but you can look at sort of the historical trend and say, okay, I could probably get it in around 70. You may have to wait more time, but it's just sort of something you feel out. And honestly, if the gas fees start going up really high, you could either just let it sit in the TX pool and wait for it to clear, or you can speed it up later. Now with this initial first transaction, it doesn't matter as much if you pay a higher gas fee because like the difference between 70 and 95 here is not gonna be huge. $12 if you use 70 uh, gas as the max fee, but let's say we even move it up to 95, it's still like 12.39. So there's not a huge distinction in this initial fee because again, it's a very simple transaction where you're basically staking your flag on the name. Once that transaction completes, then you wait for one minute and you have seven days to confirm and register your domain. That's the part that's actually gonna cost quite a bit of money, maybe as much as $100, depending on what gas fees you're looking at at the time. But again, another little hack is, like I said earlier, you can wait for times when it's low gas fees and you can even set your gas like arbitrarily low and just see if it clears over the course of the next seven days. Now you have to be careful to, if it hasn't cleared in that time, then you might wanna go in and speed up the transaction, increase the gas costs or the increase the max gas fee so that it goes through a little bit faster just so you don't lose your claim on the domain. But let's say you start this process on like a Friday night, you set your gas fee at like 35, 40 GUE maybe. And again, you can look at the historical trends and see what the minimum transactions have been over the past couple of days and just hope that you're gonna get that minimum transaction, right? You could get it as low and you know, these one GUE, that may not be a transaction submitted, that might be a miner that has submitted their own transaction and they're mining for one GUE. So don't be fooled by that. It could be a transaction submitted, but it's likely not. You're gonna be, wanna judge by like some of these other numbers here. So like you see, 24, 25, 30, 29th, it was 53. Today, the, the minimum so far has been 57. So you could sneak it in for high 20s, low 30s probably. But if you start that process on like a Friday night and it's pending until Monday morning, once you hit Monday morning, functionally, you're gonna have to speed it up a little. And at that point, you may have to spend quite a bit more money. But it's a way to save maybe 40, 50 bucks if you can execute it correctly. After that, the domain is yours. And if someone sends Ether to that address, it'll go to your public key. There is a third optional step, which is to make your public key resolve to that name. Again, so things like Etherscan will automatically display it. So, you know, you can see it's like from your ENS domain, and that's if you've set it, but you don't have to do that. Anyway, if you thought this was helpful, then like and subscribe. And if you drop your ENS domain in the comments, maybe I'll send you a little surprise. And you know what, while you're here, watch my five predictions for 2022. Thank you.